Defending the Hill. It has been 170 days since the first large march of one million protesters took place in Hong Kong against the proposed extradition bill. Since then, Hong Kong has suffered some of its most turbulent times in modern history. As the unrest grew, institutions across the city were pressured by various stakeholders to release official statements concerning their stance on the issue. Yet scripting even the simplest announcement was no easy task for anyone in charge, as the slightest bit of misunderstanding might provoke irreversible consequences. Our school also had its fair share of challenges, but though our diocesan family is a very diverse family, one sentiment that unites us is the calling to defend the hill, Boju Jiaosan, a slogan we had always been familiar with even before the current crisis. But as poetic as the slogan sounds, what does it mean to defend the hill? What is it that we are defending? And what is it that we are defending against? Before the current crisis, many would say that defending the hill meant crowning ourselves in competitions, while others might say that it is the reputation of the school we should defend. Whatever your take might be, I thank God that he has given us a very well-written school hymn, which I argue would answer all the above questions but not in the way that many of us would expect. Verse one of our school hymn calls us to build an undefiled heritage, meaning to build a home that is not dirty or impure. This concept is easier to put into practice when we visually see our school campus under threat, as evident when our janitors, teachers, and students worked hand in hand to clean up the campus after Typhoon Mankut. But there are times when we fail to fulfill this calling when the enemy is unclear, and when we feel too comfortable in this place we call home. If you type Basoy onto the search bar on YouTube, the first two results would be videos of your very impressive sports achievements. But by the third link, you will find a recorded footage of DBS boys using extremely inappropriate language on school campus. <laughs> and I actually did not mean this as a laughing matter. Now, this video might have been from a decade ago, but to be completely honest with you, we have not made much improvement in taming our tongues from the use of foul language, and neither have we improved much in other areas of discipline or conduct, including but not limited to the way we honor our school uniform or the respect we have towards teachers and to one another. These are the areas in which we continue to fall short of the standard that was set for us in our school hymn. These are the areas in which we continue to fail in defending our hill. Now, what is the purpose of building an undefiled heritage? Verse 2 of our school hymn teaches us that this yoke we bear in keeping our home clean, pure, and undefiled would lead us to experiencing God's truth by which the nations live. And I guarantee you this is no exaggeration. This current version of the school hymn was introduced to the school by our predecessors who had just experienced the horrors and the pains of World War II. Hence, it is not without careful consideration that the survivors and the school leadership implemented these time-tested lyrics into the foundation of our home. To further elaborate on the importance of pursuing a holy and undefiled life, I would like to quote from former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become character. Watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. During the past few months, our students have been rather vocal on social media, some calling for the government to respond to their five demands, and some rallying support for the government to Zibo Zailun. Whatever political side you associate yourself with, I assume your protests stem from a certain justice, fairness, or righteousness that you believe in as individuals. So where will all this lead to? To be completely honest with you, I have no idea how Hong Kong could be restored and healed from the current hurt. But this I can tell you. As of now, your calling is actually not to fix Hong Kong's problems. Your calling is to keep DBS an undefiled heritage Tame your tongue from the use of foul language. Clean up after yourselves instead of leaving your soy sauce-filled cups on the ping-pong ball tables after recess. 
Show up to class on time in proper school uniform. Respect your teachers and your peers and yourselves. If you can do the above, then perhaps God would put Hong Kong into the hands of your generation. But the Bible tells us that whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Having done the above, verse 3 of our school hymn then calls us to look to God as our judge and not our friends. In reiterating the importance of defending the hill, many misunderstand the slogan as a protection of the school's reputation. But our school hymn calls us to pursue a righteousness that is much greater, that even if our decisions might not go well with the general public, we are to look to God as the judge for what is right and what is wrong, even at the expense of being insulted by the crowd. Case in point, in May 1939, Mr. Goodband appointed a student of Japanese citizenship to be the head prefect of DBS because the boy had the best qualifications. Nonetheless, the decision turned out to be rather unpopular among students because of their patriotic fervor for the nationalist government. As we look back to this incident, we would appreciate Mr. Goodband's impartiality in appointing a head prefect based on qualifications and not on citizenship. But this decision certainly required great strength and courage from Mr. Goodband. We are to look to God as the judge, even at the expense of our own popularity. Finally, verse 4 of our school hymn calls us to find the strength to comfort those who are in distress, a much-needed strength, especially in this a day and age. And verse 5 concludes with the importance of forgiveness and the love of God to all men, a forgiveness that is given even before the repentance of those who have wronged us, because God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In the same way, we too are to love those who hurt us and bless those who curse us. And this is how we are called to defend the hill. Bo Ju Jo San. Amen.